Hi, Andy here from buildahottub.com. In this video, we're gonna look at all of the aspects right from start to finish of building a hot tub in your backyard. So first we're gonna start with a little bit of the background for, for my own build. Uh, as you can see here, super happy with the end result. The problem that I had was I wanted a hot tub, but in my backyard, I've got a, a really tight corner that I just couldn't get a, a hot tub round. So I, I phoned around a few companies, I checked with them to see if I could get a plastic shell tub, you know, round the corner, and they just said it wasn't gonna happen. Uh, I couldn't crane it in. Uh, I know a lot of people crane in over the top of their houses, um, the, the plastic shell tubs. Uh, it was just too far. I've, I've got a, a lovely long garden and it was just you know, too far for a crane to reach. So yes, they could get it over the house, but they could come around the side anyway. So it, it was kind of pointless. So I started looking around and you know, I'm thinking, how can I get the, the hot tub that I you know, really want in my backyard? You know, I can't have a plastic shell tub, you know, what's the alternative? So I you know, started Googling, you know, can you build a hot tub? And there wasn't a great deal of, uh, of information that, that came up. So being me, being super determined, I, I knew that I really wanted that hot tub, so I wasn't gonna let that stop me. So I continued to search and eventually I, I did find a, um, it was quite an old website. It was back from 2008, 2009, I think, uh, about a guy that had, had actually done it in the, in the UK. And I've, I've subsequently looked him up, I've spoken to him um, and he was, uh, he was you know, super excited that, that people were actually using um, you know, the, the, the method that he had. Um, but he, he didn't have the whole process lined out. He had some, some pictures and, and it was at the time when a lot of the components weren't actually available. So he was importing them and, and his website kind of focused on the, you know, how you import the, the parts that you need from America and, and that kind of thing. So once I'd found that site, I, I sort of had a, 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 you know, a, a groundwork to work with, if you like, of, of how I was going to build uh, this hot tub. So I knew that I wanted to use concrete blocks. So then I needed to research, you know, the type of jets and, and that kind of thing, uh, how I was going to waterproof it. I had so many different questions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from, from start to finish. Uh, now I've kind of explained a bit of the background on my, uh, on my project. And uh, hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have everything that you need uh, to be able to go out and, uh, and build your own hot tub. Planning and preparation, super, super important for your DIY hot tub in, in your backyard. The planning stage is, you know, is the most important stage. If you get something wrong here, um, it's, you know, it's gonna impact later on. So what do I mean by planning? Well, there's a few things that you need to think about. Firstly, location. You know, I, I'm lucky enough to have you know, potentially you know, several different places where I could have placed my hot tub. So I chose to, to actually reclaim um, an, an area of land that you can see behind me here that I was gonna use in my garden for, for the hot tub. Are you going to have it in ground or are you going to build it above ground so this is a consideration because uh, certainly in in some states and, and in some townships you need different planning regulations if you're going to have an in-ground tub versus an overground tub so do check with your local planning department as that will kind of impact how you're going to build um, your your hot tub how are you going to fill it you, you've got to fill these things and you know, can you, uh, you know, have you got water access? Can you get a hose pipe um, from the, you know, I, I know we can all run uh, you know, 100 feet of hose and, and, and do it that way. But again, you've got to be mindful that you are gonna need to top up the water from time to time as it evaporates. Um, so you, you either need to plan to have a, a water source available or, or already have one. Where are you gonna empty the, the tub to? So periodically you are gonna to need to uh, empty that hot tub to change the water, just to keep it nice and fresh and, and clean. 
Uh, where's that water going to go? Are you going to are you going to pump it out? Are you going to put it down the drain? Uh, you're not going to be watering your flowers with it. It's not going to go on your lawn. So you are going to need a way of disposing of that water, and of course, disposing of it correctly. So that's a, a consideration that you uh, that you need to think of. How big is your hot tub going to be? Now, this we'll, we'll actually talk about this in, in greater detail when it comes on to, to running costs and, and that kind of a thing. But the size uh, is important. If you go too big, it's going to take way too long and it's going to cost you a fortune to heat up. Uh, if you go too small, then you've got the converse of, of not being able to get everybody in that you, you know, if you want a six person tub, but you make it too small so you can only get four in. It's that kind of thing. It's pretty logical. But the size uh, is important because it's going to dictate the size of pump because, you know, that's going to dictate how many jets you need. Uh, it's going to dictate what size filter you need. And obviously, as I said, it's going to dictate the running costs. So a, you know, a, uh, a an extra meter or an extra couple of feet on the um, on the hot tub itself can can add you know, maybe twenty percent to the to the running cost and the heating of that uh, of that tub. So it's something to bear in mind. What shape are you going to make the the hot tub? Now, if you're going to build it out of a brick or cinder block or, or the thermo blocks. Um, Building something square or rectangular is, is so much easier than, um, than, than building a cylindrical tub. Now, a couple of my customers have built uh, cylindrical tubs, um, but they've generally had the brickwork done by professional bricklayers. So uh, I would suggest for simplicity that if you're going to do it, you do a square or a rectangle, it's so much easier. Um, you know, if you're new to bricklaying as I was when I did mine, I chose to do a, uh, it's, it's almost a perfect square, uh, but it, it's, it's slightly uh, rectangular in nature, but it was easier to do because cutting blocks you know, perpendicular is so much easier than, than trying to lay um, you know, a, a, a perfect curve. So shape, really important as well. How are you gonna finish? the the hot tub and finish uh, i mean on the on the surface itself are you looking to to paint the the, the surface are you going to use uh, some of the epoxy sprays that you that you see uh, being used for for swimming pools uh, as i did are you going to use uh, tiles and swimming pool grout to to give a, a nice uh, tiled finish to to your hot tub all of these finishing methods you need to have a think about because they also impact uh, the, the waterproofing and they also impact your budget. So if you're gonna finish something with tiles, for example, it's gonna cost a lot more than if you're using a painted surface. So if you're working to a budget, then um, you do need to cost out these kind of things. So you should be doing this at the planning stage um, of, your, of your tub. We've touched on size already, but how deep um, should your tub be? You know, are you are you looking for any kind of swim features to make it more of a of a swim spa than uh, than just a hot tub? These are things that you really want to get in at the uh, at the planning stage, rather than trying to fit them afterwards. It's so much easier if you start right at the beginning with the plan that you uh, are going to move forward with. One of my favourites, uh, just because I made a bit of a mess of it myself was the control room. Now I call it the control room. This is the area that's gonna house your pump, your filter, a blower if you have one. The issue that I had with my build was I didn't allow enough space. So I, I kind of got the dimensions of, of the components off the various websites and I kind of estimated the, the size that, that they were gonna take. What I didn't account for was the size of the fittings. So the, the water pipe, for example, water pipe is two inch. The fittings, they're big, they're chunky, they're beautiful things to work with because they're so well made, but they take up space. So every time that you put in a, uh, a joint or uh, a 90 degree bend, it takes up space. And I didn't allow for that in my control room. So when you see the pictures of my control room, everything's kind of crammed in there and it, it really doesn't look the best and that's one of the the biggest things that i've been able to help people with um going forward was you know don't make the same mistake that i did leave uh an, enough space 
for though all of those components it's better to have more space than than not enough as in my case it was not enough so i ended up having to cram them in they're at strange angles if i could really go back and do it again i'm sure i will at some point redo the the control room just to make it so much better and and easier to uh, to fit those components in you know without obviously hindering the the performance at all how are you going to heat your hot tub and by that i mean which method are uh, you you planning to use so i went with electric um, electric in in my opinion is is the easiest to put in um, in terms of of running costs you know it's up there it's not the cheapest in terms of speed of heating, it's probably the slowest. So there's lots of different options uh, that we need to consider here. So let, let's run through those options. So first is electric, as we've discussed. Second is propane or natural gas. Now, propane or natural gas, the, the benefits of this are it's super fast to heat up. These are by far the quickest way to, to heat your hot tub. So if you're, you're looking for a, you know, a split second morning decision that you, you want to go in later that day, you want a propane or a natural gas heated hot tub and that will heat up super, super quick. The downside is you need a piped gas feed. If not, you need a tank somewhere in your backyard or your garden. Okay, so there are you know, that downside to, to the propane gas route. Air source heat pumps. These are relatively new technology, but they do add a, a, a certain heating efficiency and they can, they can drop down the running costs of your hot tub up to around 30%, um, so I'm told. Uh, I don't have one myself, uh, but quite a few of my customers have used these and, and plumbed these into um, their hot tubs. The way that these work is they sit in series with your spa pack or your, your electric heater that's gonna be there, and they provide additional heat. You set the temperature on the air source heat pump a couple of degrees lower than on your uh, electric spa pack. They have uh, auto flow sensors built into them, so once the the water is circulating through the heaters, it will kick in and you'll get that boost from the air source heat pump. It takes the, um, the heat from the air through the exchanger, pops it into the water and, and then into your tub. Very simplistic way. And I will do a video um, on much more detail on, on air source heat pumps uh, on the channel. Another option that you see um, out about, certainly if you're Googling around, is wood fire. I really would not recommend a, uh, a wood fired uh, hot tub that uses convection heating uh, for a concrete build. You know, if you're gonna use a, a, you know, these beautiful cedar round tubs, that kind of thing, you want to be totally off the grid, then that, that works. But if you're gonna build uh, an in-ground concrete tub, uh, you're not gonna want to use a, uh, a wood fire as a medium of, of heating that tub. It's, it's gonna take too long, too much work, and it, it's pretty inefficient for something that size. Hot tub electrics. So this question always crops up um, from my customers is, you know, how much electricity do I need? What are the voltages? What's the current draw? So firstly, with anything electrical, uh, you should definitely consult uh, a qualified electrician. In terms of the supply, uh, most hot tub components will run on 230 volts if you're in uh, America or 240 volts if you're in uh, Europe. If you're in America, it's 230 volts and 60 hertz. If you're in Europe, it's 50 hertz. You can't take a uh, motor that you found cheap, so a pump that you found cheap in Europe and take that to America or a pump that you've bought in America and bring it over to the UK. It doesn't work like that. You need to match the component that is rated for the electricity supply uh, that you have. If you're in America, you may be thinking, well, hold on, I've got 110 or 115 volt supply into my home. How do I get that to 230? Well, you've actually got what's called a split system into your home. So you have two different supplies of 115 volts. So the way that it works is your electrician will combine those two supplies together to give you one of 230. Pretty simple really, uh, but again, you do need a qualified electrician to, to put that in place for you. 
In terms of the current that you're going to need, well, it really depends on all of the different components that you're going to use. So if you've got a, a heater, a pump, a blower, what you need to do is you need to add the, uh, the running current for each one so for a pump you're going to look at the high speed and it's going to be probably 12 to 15 amps that that's going to need you're going to need to add that to the amount of current that your blower will need the amount of current that your heater will need and that's going to give you a, an overall number which again depending on the components that you choose from it's going to be around 40 to, to 45 amps so what you're going to ask your electrician is, can you put me in a 50 amp breaker? And they will then wire in a, uh, uh, an electric breaker. So if more current than 50 amps is drawn on the circuit, the breaker will trip and it will protect um, all of the components. And you know, anybody that's in the, the tub when a, there's an electrical failure or something like that, obviously you want to be uh, sure that that's, uh, that's going to cut out. And that's why you're going to have an electrician do that for you. So you need to know all of the, the current draw, the amps that each of your components is going to need. You're going to add that together. And then you do need a little bit of headway on top of that number as well. And that's because when some of the components start up, they have a little spike in the supply. And you don't want, for example, when your pump kicks in, that your breaker trips off every time. So again, an electrician will be able to advise you on exactly what you need, uh, but as a rough calculation, you need to add up all of those different values on your pump, your blower, your heater, add them all together, that will give you a number, and you're gonna need um, you know, probably five or six amps above that to give you um, the supply that you, you need. Now, when you're putting uh, the supply itself into your garden, you're going to need a, uh, an outdoor rotary breaker on that as well. Um, for certainly over here in the UK, it's regulation that you have to have one uh, within, uh, I believe it's two meters. Uh, I'm sure somebody will correct me on this, uh, on this video in the chat if I'm wrong, uh, of the tub. But you do need that circular breaker. Uh, and it, it just isolates it completely um, in the event that you need to go in and do some servicing you can turn that breaker cuts everything off and just makes it really nice and safe to be able to do but that is a requirement uh, over here in the UK and again you should check with your uh, with your local counties in the US if um, if they require you to have one I would definitely recommend one from a safety point of view um, but also for for servicing your tub if you need to change anything uh, in that control room as I like to call it you can just turn off the the rotary breaker and you know that you're uh, that you're totally safe you're also going to need different wiring into your garden. So generally, uh, I would say it needs to be 10 millimeter squared cable, and that is capable of delivering the, um, the, the amount of current that you need to run the, uh, run the components. That cable, it should be armored um, so that it can't be, you can't put a fork through it or a spade through it if you're digging. Uh, if you're attaching it to the wall, uh, it, if it's in your garden, you should be using armoured cable just so that you're, I mean, in my case, I attach mine to the wall. But I put armoured and a run all the way down the wall because I didn't want my young kids, you know, driving their little cars and, and, and hitting the cable at all and, and, and taking chunks out of it. So again, it's just a safety thing that you really do want to put armored cable with the crack breaker and you're going to want that rotary switch as well for your supply and all of that has got to be within the vicinity of your control room so the placement of the control room the supply of the electricity and the placement of that rotary switch all should be done at your planning stage last two things that you should consider at the planning stage Audiovisual, are you gonna put any TVs or are you gonna put any speakers into your build? Running cables at time of build rather than having to pull everything up afterwards is, uh, is definitely something that, uh, that I would advise. So again, get that in at the planning stage. And lastly, are you gonna cover the, uh, the hot tub at all with any kind of enclosure or building? Again, this should be done uh, at planning stage. Now, I definitely recommend uh, drawing up some uh, some plans so you've got something to, to work from. And this is something that, that I can certainly help you with. 
if um, if you're not able to do it yourself a lot of my customers will will sketch what they need they'll sketch with some rough um, with you know with some sort of rough dimensions and and they'll just send them through and uh, one of the services that I do offer is being able to turn those into uh, 3d CAD drawings uh, you can see some examples behind me now and it, it just makes life so much easier and, and this I can help you with on the on the plumbing side and I'll mention that when we move into uh, looking at plumbing shortly <music> Okay, now we're gonna look at plumbing. So plumbing's probably the area of, of building your own DIY hot tub that I get the most questions about. It seems to be the area that most people are maybe skeptical about or not sure whether they can actually do the plumbing. Uh, the good news is, is the plumbing itself is, is not that difficult. The concept is, is pretty straightforward. So you are heating the water with a heater, you're pumping it around with a pump. Okay, and it's, it really is that simple. So if you think the water starts in the hot tub, it gets drawn by the pump through, it's normally the front of the pump it, it, that has the inlet there, so it goes into the pump, it goes out either the side or the top of the pump. That then passes into the filter. It then goes through the filter, then into the heater, and then back into the hot tub via the jets. And it's just that circulation process uh, that gives us um, you know, the, the heated and the, uh, the, the I guess, the, the bubbly water. Now the bubbles do come with uh, the addition of a blower, which we'll, uh, we'll talk about later, but that, uh, that, that process is really simple. So you have to have some inlet drains in your, in your hot tub to allow the water to be drawn out and into the pump. Normally you would have a skimmer connected as well, certainly if you're doing a, an in-ground concrete tub, and that just helps with the water flow as well. You would always have two inlet drains in case one gets blocked. It's, it's just the industry standard. It's also a safety thing as well. Uh, you don't want that pump being starved of water. If there's no water in a pump, it will overheat and it will damage. Uh, and if you're running, it's called running it dry. Manufacturers generally don't uh, honor the warranties because they say you're not allowed to run them dry. So we've got to make sure that there's always a good flow of water from the hot tub into the, uh, the inlet or the front of the, uh, of the pump. One of the questions that I get asked a lot is regarding the jets on the, on the hot tub and how they kind of all fit together with the, with the plumbing. So let's take a look at that now. This is what a, uh, a fully assembled Gunite jet and body looks like, and it's comprised of a jet. We've got a jet holder here. Normally these would be nice and flush, but I'm, I'm using kind of an exploded view so we can, we can see what's going on. We have the Gunite niche, two and a half inch pipe, and then the Gunite body at the back. And inside of this, it screws in here, and we have the water line as well. Okay, so this is the water pipe that carries the water from the, the body into the, the jet. So if I just screw that back in there, okay. Now on the back of the Gunite body, we've got two sections here. The two inch pipe section is for water, so this would be a water feed, and the one and a half inch pipe on the top is for air. And the whole premise of the, the Gunite is that you mix air and water together inside of the, the Gunite body and you get a stronger jet and you also get more a much more bubbly um, kind of output as well into your hot tub which you know, we're all uh, looking for in the end I guess so okay so let's let's take this all apart and uh, have a look how we can uh, assemble it okay so we're going to start with the the Gunite body and what we're going to do is we're going to drill the the hole to allow the two and a half inch pipe which connects us so to go through the the wall of the hot tub which sits here and this is now inside the the hot tub once we have the pipes cut nice and flush we can then add a, a niche onto the the end of that two and a half inch pipe and the, this is going to be the the hot tub wall here it's going to be totally flush with my finish and behind me you can see uh, some pictures of, of of kind of what this looks like uh, and the process but my hot tub wall is going to be totally flush with the, uh, with the niche here. Into the granite body goes a jet holder, which is sat on a one inch pipe. 
And at the bottom of the, the one inch pipe is a, a threaded ring. And this allows me then to insert and that will twist into place and that holds it firmly in place. Now, this would normally be totally flush, but I've done it so it sits kind of proud so we can see on the video uh, the different parts of the, the jet system. Once this is totally flush, and this again is gonna be the, the wall of the hot tub, it's then time to, to add the jet. The jet is the last piece of the puzzle, and this simply fits into the jet holder, and it twists and locks in place. And that's it, we're ready to go with our gunite system. What we're gonna do now is just recap the, the inward plumbing and the outward plumbing using uh, a couple of the CAD diagrams uh, that you're able to, to purchase in my uh, online store. I'd highly recommend it. Once you've got the plans, it makes life so much easier. It just takes away any of that uh, guesswork, I guess, which uh, in, in the long run is, is gonna cost you in the wallet. So as we can see behind me, this is the, the inward plumbing. So we've got the two bottom drains and we've got the skimmer connected to those bottom drains. This is going to allow the water now to be drawn into the, the pump. Once it's passed through the pump, as we've said, it goes into the filter, from filter into the heater and from the heater it then passes, as we can see, back into the, um, the outward plumbing. Now there's two different lines that you can see on the diagram behind me. The bottom one is the two inch water feed. So that, as we've seen, it connects to the gunite bodies and it allows water to go back into the hot tub. On top is the one and a half inch airline. And this connects to your blower, which is in the control room. On your blower, you will have a non-return valve. And that's really, really important because once you turn off the pump, the water will flow back into all of the pipes and it flows into the air pipes as well. So if you don't have that on, that non-return valve on that blower, you're gonna fill your blower full of water. Um, as soon as you turn it on, it's gonna trip your breaker and it's gonna damage the kit as well. So you've got to have a non-return valve connected to that blower just to keep the water out of the, uh, of the system. So these are just uh, some short examples. Uh, the full diagrams, piece by piece, uh, are available, as I said, at my online store, shop.buildahottub.com and they're available in all the different sizes uh, depending on how big um, you're, you're actually building your, your tub. So do, do check that out. As I said, the instructions just make life so much easier and it takes away the guesswork in putting your plumbing together. We're now gonna talk about making uh, a, a good plumbing joint. The kit that's involved with hot tubs is, is really substantial. Um, we're, we're not talking flimsy pieces of plastic, they are substantial because they've got to withstand the pressure. Anything that's pressurized with water involved means you're gonna have to have well-made joints, otherwise you are gonna have leaks and you really don't want to be trying to plug leaks. Connections that are made well with the fittings, the correct pipe, the correct pipe cement, don't leak. Badly made connections, connections that don't go all the way into the, the corners or the, the straight uh, the sockets, they, they are going to leak. Whether it's today, whether it's 12 months down the line, if they're not made correctly, they're going to leak. So as you can see behind me, here is the process for making a, a, a kind of perfect joint. You're going to use plenty of PVC pipe cement, don't be shy, really cover the, uh, the connection uh, in that pipe cement. And when you push the pipe in, it's gotta go all the way in. You're looking at about three centimeters or just over an inch for every one of the connections to, to really force that connection into the, um, the, the, the socket. And if you look on the other end, so if, you've, um, you know, if you're able to look through one of the joints, you should see that there's a, a layer of the pipe cement that's built up right on the edge of the pipe, which just means it's made a really good connection. The excess pipe cement will dry and it'll just seal it really nicely inside of the connection. Take your time with the plumbing. Uh, it's really worth getting it right because going back at a later date to, to try and redo the plumbing, unfortunately, I made a few mistakes on, on my own build, so I have had to go back and redo them, and it's just, uh, it, it's just frustrating having to, to go and redo something that you've, you know, you've already done. If you get it right first time, it's not gonna leak.
Okay, so the control room. The control room, as we've seen in the planning stages, got to have plenty of space for this. Don't squeeze the components in as I did. For me, if there was one thing that I could go back and change on my own build, it would definitely be the amount of space that I left for the control room. My components are all way too close together and it just makes it difficult to get in there to change filters, that kind of thing. So make sure, as we said in the planning stage, leave plenty of space. Where's your control room gonna be? Is it gonna be above ground? Is it gonna be below ground? Regardless of the location, it's gonna to need to be covered. It needs to be watertight. You can't have your pumps, your spar pack, the blower, you can't have those exposed to the elements. So it does need to be weather tight and of course, rainproof. If you're going for a below ground control room, you're gonna need some kind of drainage. You, know, you don't want this filling up with water and the water getting into your, your spa pack. Obviously water and electricity doesn't mix. So make sure you do put in some kind of drainage into uh, that control room. I often get asked how big or how powerful the pump should be. Well, this really depends on your build itself. You know, how far away is the control room from the hot tub? The further away, the greater what is called head, which is the weight of water that the pump needs to, to push and, and pull to, to, to make that hot tub work. So the calculations really are, are unique. So if you have a control room which is further away, you're gonna need a more powerful pump. The, the closer you get, the, the power will decrease. How many jets are you gonna have? This also is dictated by how powerful your pump needs to be. Each jet requires a certain level of flow, so it's got to have a certain amount of water going through it at any time to make it work properly. So you need to calculate the, the flow rate of all of your jets, the distance from your control room to your hot tub to give you uh, any kind of uh, head calculation, and you go from there. As a rule of thumb, uh, in my builds, I generally don't specify any more than 16 jets on a single pump. Uh, I've just found it's much easier and it's more cost efficient for the customer just to have a single pump. You can, of course, put multiple pumps in series and, and, and increase the number of jets in your tub. However, the reality is, you know, 16 jets in a concrete build gives you a very nice hot tub experience. So you don't really need any more than that. And again, it keeps the, the cost down using a, a single pump. The pump, of course, it should be dual speed. So you need to be able to circulate the water as well as turn on the jet mode. It's possible to have a separate circulation pump as well as a jet pump, but again, I like simplicity, I like to keep the cost down, so having a single pump that can do both of these things is, uh, is a real bonus. In terms of the blower and how powerful this should be, again, it depends on the distance uh, from the control room to the hot tub. One horsepower is, is plenty for, for most builds, just to kind of give you a, a, a rough idea there on the, on the blower. As we said before, with the blower, make sure you've got a non-return valve on that. You do not want water seeping back into the blower uh, as that will play havoc with your electricity system. How powerful should the heater be in the spa pack? This is a, a question that we, we get asked quite a lot. Again, it depends on the size of the tub that you're building. Bigger the tub, bigger the heater. Bigger the heater, faster the water will heat up bigger the electric bill. So it's, a, it's kind of a trade-off between uh, all three. In, in Europe, I generally specify a three kilowatt heater because that's um, more than enough for, for most size of hot tubs that we, we build over here. In America, generally it's between four and five kilowatts. Uh, as with everything in America, bigger is better. So uh, that's the, the general specification that we use for, uh, for tubs in, uh, in the US. Now onto the spa pack. The spa pack itself is a really important part of the control room. It houses the heater, but it also controls the speed of the pumps, whether it's in circulation or whether it's in high speed jets. This is controlled by the spa pack itself. You might see those little control panels that you have the buttons for jets and, and heat, that kind of thing. Uh, it also controls the blower. 
so you can turn the blower on and off through the spa pack. So it's, it's kind of the brains, if you like, of your hot tub. And you're gonna use this in conjunction with any uh, kind of secondary heating sources. So things like propane, natural gas, air source heat pumps. You're gonna combine the spa pack with those because you need the capabilities of the filter cycle, which is provided by the spa pack, but also the purge cycle. So the purge cycle is where the hot tub jets are turned on for a short period of time, perhaps 30 seconds, maybe twice a day. And that just purges the water from the pipes. So it removes any sitting water in the pipes back into the tub to allow it to circulate and, and get filtered. And this just prevents things in extreme cases like Legionnaires, for example, which can build up in water that's sitting for long periods of time and, and not being used. So the spa pack, as we've seen, is a really important piece of kit in your control room. If you need any additional assistance or you need the plans and designs for a control room, I actually have a package dedicated for this in my online shop. So that's shop.buildahottub.com. Head over, search for control room. You'll find all of the information that you need to enable you to build that awesome control room for your DIY hot tub. Hot tub lights, they look really cool when it's gone dark, you can change the colour of your water, you've got all those different modes, different colours, it, beautiful. A couple of problems with, with hot tub lights, certainly when it comes to self builds. The problem is, is that the models that are available are really for plastic shell tubs. So they're, they're not really bright enough for, um, for a, a, a concrete or a block built hot tub. So what you then need to do is you need to look for a swimming pool light. Now, there's a problem with these in that anything that has swimming pool related to it or swimming pool in the name, uh, I say has a, a swimming pool tax added to it. So it's awfully expensive to find a, uh, an LED swimming pool light that's color changing that you can use in your um, custom built hot tubs. So what we've done here at buildahottub.com is we've actually launched our own product. Here I have my hot tub light. It is super slim, as you can see here. So, so slim. In designing the light as well, it's super easy to install. There's no niche at all. You've got those two screw holes that you can see, so it's actually a surface mounted light, and it's really, really simple. Firstly, you need a section of pipe that is gonna house the cable. And the reason that you do this is so if you do need to service the light at all, you don't need to drain the, the hot tub. So as long as you've got a couple of feet of cable, you're able to take the light out of its fitting and lift it above the water line for, for any kind of service that you need. Now, I should say that there are no serviceable parts on the light itself, as it's all uh, totally encased in resin for, uh, for waterproofing, which is, is really fantastic. So those LED lights, they last 50,000 hours and you're going to have that uh, resin encased uh, waterproofing just to help you know, prolong the, the lifespan of the, uh, of the product. We've also added a remote control so you can change the, the colour and the modes very easily. This isn't waterproof so you would set the, the mode that you want and with the controller that we use, when you turn it on and off, uh, it remembers your last setting. So you can set it just how you like it. So when you do turn off that power supply, um, when you turn it back on, it's exactly how you left it. So what we've done with the light is we've made a really easy to install. It's super bright, 35 watt, and it's really reasonably priced as well. So it retails at 199, um, very, very competitively priced for your uh, home build. Once the planning stage is complete, the next step is obviously to break ground. Whether you're going to be digging down, whether you're going to be clearing the area and laying a base is totally up to you and how you've decided to, to construct uh, your, your hot tub. So for me, I was building an, an in-ground tub and my biggest concern concern was whether I could lay blocks to a good enough standard that they were going to be strong enough to, to, to keep the water in and not, not split under pressure. So what I did was I dug down as you can see behind me here and I actually dug the, the shape of the tub that I was going to build. 
and the idea was that I was then going to lay the blocks in stages and I was going to backfill behind the blocks so there was nowhere at all for, for those blocks to move under the pressure of the water. Now if you're going to build an out, out of ground tub then you're going to lay a slab first. Your slab is going to be around 15 centimetres or 6 to 7 inches of, uh, of concrete and that's going to be uh, nice and thick and, and stable because you're going to be taking quite a lot of weight. Remember water uh, does weigh quite a lot and if you're building something that's roughly I don't know eight or nine feet by eight or nine feet you're going to have um, somewhere in the region of about two tons to two and a half tons of water in there. So it's quite a lot of weight that's going to go on that base. So your base has got to be rock solid to begin with. You're going to have to put in a rebar structure so you can see behind me even in my footwell uh, I had a rebar structure that I was then going to fill over the top with um, with concrete before I got to that stage uh, you can also see that there's a, a black uh, it was actually a pond liner that I used and I put this underneath um, all of the, um, the, the the footwell, the seats, the sides, because I didn't want any uh, dirt, dirty water ingress into the tub itself. So I put the liner down to really to keep water out rather than to, to keep the water in. So the waterproofing we'll, we'll talk about uh, shortly. Once I had the, the base for the footwell and the first couple of layers of the footwell blocks, things really started to, to take shape on my build. So I then backfilled behind those blocks once they'd set. I then put some type one gravel down that I used a, 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 a bouncer or a whacker to, to make flat ready for yet more rebar. And then I was gonna pour the concrete on top to make the, the seat base. So whilst I didn't have a, um, I, I guess a, a, a slab for the, uh, for the seats, I did actually make a, a, a kind of a slab by, uh, by just using the seat form to, uh, to create that, that flat area. As you can see on the, on the picture behind me, so I had a slab for the footwell, I built up to the seat level, I did a slab for the seats, and then I built the sides up to get me to, to the right height for the, uh, for the top. And don't forget when you're building either your footwell or your sides, don't forget about the drains. So for me, mine were gonna go through the, the lower step, up through behind the back of the seat into the control room, as you can see on the picture behind me. And um, so I had to put these in at this stage. Also, your skimmer, your skimmer is gonna go in at this stage. So you're gonna, gonna physically attach the skimmer. Uh, obviously, you're not gonna plumb it in at this stage, but you are gonna physically attach it to the wall and, and you're gonna cement it all into place so it's ready to be attached to your plumbing when you're ready. And finally, it's at this point where you're gonna to need to think about your light position. You should have already done this at the planning stage, but for the light, if you're using my light, the buildhottub.com light, uh, you are gonna to need to put uh, half a foot uh, to a foot of pipe into the wall so it can house the cable so that you're able to take that light above the water level as we've already mentioned. So again, it's at this point that you're gonna add the, uh, the piping ready for uh, your hot tub light to go into place. Before we move on and waterproof the structure of the hot tub, it's now time to connect up all the pipes. So we've already got the gunite bodies in place, as you can see. They go, if you remember, through the brickwork and they take the air and the water into the tub uh, and they have the jets inside them. Now we're gonna connect all of those together. If you look at the plumbing diagrams, maybe you've purchased one from shop.buildahottub.com, you'll notice that the, uh, the pipes don't go all the way round in a, in a continuous loop or a, a continuous square. If it's a square tub, they actually stop and they meet in a corner, but they're not connected. Now this is intentional because it actually increases the pressure on the, the water and the, and the jets, so you get a better experience in the tub. Now, I'm sure there's those of you that are much better at physics and have a, a, a more technical uh, explanation for this, uh, but rest assured that because they don't meet, uh, it is a greater pressure, and uh, again, it's just a better experience when, uh, when you're in the tub. Now, once you've got all your pipework connected, you don't have to put the control room in at this stage. You can do that right at the end. 
but now it's time to seal everything up and make it nice and watertight. One of the questions that I get asked uh, an awful lot is how do I waterproof the concrete blocks uh, or the brick structure that I've used to, to build the, uh, the hot tub? Well, there was a couple of things that I did on my own build, and this is generally what I recommend uh, to my customers as well. Firstly, at every opportunity, you need to add waterproofing agents, whether that's to your mortar mix, uh, whether it's to your concrete that you're actually mixing as well. At every opportunity, you should be adding the, the waterproofing agent. And this is something that you can get from any, uh, any Home Depot or DIY store. Um, the way that it works is um, concrete as a material is, is porous in nature because of the air holes that are actually inside it. So what these agents do is they actually reduce the air holes so it, it reduces the, the permeability of the, uh, of the concrete. If you're adding this at every stage during your build, the waterproofing is actually gonna build up over time. So what I actually did was, once I got the blocks all in place, I actually sealed them with a, uh, I just used a PVA wash and I did three or four coats to, to actually do it. There are some uh, materials that you can buy, uh, again, any good Home Depot or, or, or DIY store will, will actually have these and they're, they're able to seal the, um, the, the concrete or the bricks. So you can buy um, sealing, sealant um, that you can use to actually you know, seal up the structure. So it's, it's pretty straightforward. Once I'd sealed the, the bricks, I then applied a, uh, a concrete render or a mortar render to, to the blocks itself. And you can see that behind me. Again, I mixed in lots and lots of the waterproofing agent into the mix. So I was adding, you know, and building up that waterproofing um, sort of barrier, if you like, uh, at every possible stage. For me, I knew that the, uh, the, the, the major waterproofing barrier was gonna be the tiles that I used to, uh, to finish the, uh, the tub itself. So I used swimming pool grade um, grout and adhesive Again, that's waterproof uh, in, in nature. And then I used uh, non-porous tiles. I didn't use swimming pool tiles, but a lot of my customers do, and they, they look great. Um, you, know, you can see some examples behind me, but I used regular tiles. Um, they were designed for wet rooms, wet areas, be because they are, um, uh, again, they're waterproof themselves. I didn't use any sealant on the tiles. You can buy sealant for the tiles as well if you want to go that additional step, if you're worried about uh, you know, water getting into, um, in, in, into the joints of your tub, that kind of thing. Uh, I didn't, I went with, firstly, the PVA seal. I then did a waterproof render. On top of that, I then had the waterproof grout and adhesive, which was swimming pool grade. And then I finished all that off with, um, with those tiles. And I've not had a problem with the, uh, with the leaks at all um, on, the, on the tub. Okay, so now we're on the home straight. It's down to those finishing touches. So it's actually the, the time that you're gonna fill the hot tub for the first time. Super, super exciting at this point. Um, you know, the, for me, it took about four hours for the, for the tub to fill. And then at that point, you can turn on and test the jets and the blower for, for the very first time with water. So really, really exciting time. Check for leaks. Uh, do check in your control room around the filter, around the pump with those union nuts. Just make sure that they're nice and tight. Uh, if you know water is coming out, especially under high speed, because there's a lot more pressure, just give those nuts a, an extra little turn. Um, a tip here is you can use a, um, a an oil filter set of pliers. Um, you know they're nice and wide, and they can grip the filter, and grip those nuts nice and tight to uh, to, to just make those connections uh, even better. Once you're filled with water, you're obviously turning it on and now you're going to check for leaks down the pipes as well. Uh, one thing I would say here is if you do have any leaks on any of your joins, don't try and patch them, just pull them out, cut them out 
and, and remake them again properly. Uh, it, you're just wasting your time if you're going to try and plug those leaks with, um, you know, with an epoxy sealant or something like that. Over time, it, it will just give way. And again, that's from personal experience. Um, just cut them out, get it right from the start, and, uh, and, and you'll be just fine. So how are you going to finish um, your, your hot tub project, whether it's with a, you know, a pergola over the top, some kind of a gazebo, some kind of a building, a cover. Uh, for me, it was a deck. So I built a deck and I put, also put a new fence in. Well, it wasn't totally new. It just kind of covered the, the old one, if I'm honest. Uh, but I used this beautiful Western red cedar, as you can see, the, the, the colors uh, and the smell of the wood is, uh, is just fantastic. Um, it's not the cheapest thing in the world, but it does look uh, really nice, and I, I'm super happy with the, um, you know, with the, with, with the final result. Uh, it's, it, it really is great. Hope you found this video really helpful. I've really enjoyed making it, and I, I really enjoyed my, my whole hot tub uh, project. So, thanks for watching, and uh, yeah, hope to see you again soon. If you've liked this video, please do like, share, and subscribe to the channel. See you on the next video.